my brother and sister in Christ. In whom do you trust? That is that gospel. My brother and sister in Christ, if you trust God and you have faith in him, you could tell a cypress tree, you could tell a mulberry tree to uproot itself, walk into the ocean, plant itself on the bottom, and it would grow. Let me make sure you understand. If you trust in God and had a little bit of faith of a mustard seed, you could tell a mulberry tree or a sycamore tree in their day to uproot itself so you could talk to it. It would listen. It would actually uproot itself, walk itself into the ocean, go all the way to the bottom, put its roots back in the ground, albeit salt water, and begin to flourish. Do you trust me this much? Well, my brother in Christ, now stop. You're a first century Jew. Please remember this. Christ is a Jew. His mother is Jewish. His stepfather is Jewish. He is circumcised as a Jew. He is found in a temple. He is crucified for being a king of the Jews. Now, he is the Messiah. He could have come into the world any way he wanted. He came in as a Jew. And when he says the words, do this and sacrifice to me, start of the Catholic Church. Just so you know, my brother and sister in Christ, the word Catholic means according to the whole. It becomes so popular, it becomes universal. You do these four things. Gather in one place. Listen to the apostles. Sing the psalms and break bread. You are no longer considered Jewish. You are considered Catholic. So my brother and sister in Christ, so you understand the Jewish setting. Luke is a follower of Paul. Luke is a physician by trade. He is speaking to Jews and to Gentiles, so he has to temper the language a little bit. Remember, Luke is not an apostle, but he also is the only one that has, um, he has a sequel, if you will. He wrote the gospel, and then he did the Acts of the Apostles. He's using parables. Why does he use parables? Because that's how you and I remember things, like Paul Harvey. Okay, good, you do understand. He uses a parable, but remember this, every parable has a twist, something that doesn't seem logical, it's not reasonable. I mean that you could communicate with a tree and tell it to get up and uproot itself and plant itself in the ocean. But then there's what they call a nimshaw. That is somewhere in the very end of the parable where the truth comes out, where he talks about if you just had a little bit of faith, you could move mountains and plant trees in the ocean. But the fact of the matter is, you do your duty and you think, I owe you for something. You can do nothing without me. You can't even have a thought. You can't have an essence. You can't have an understanding. You don't even exist, myself included, if he has chosen not to. My brother and sister in Christ, he's telling them, you better learn to trust me completely and wholeheartedly. Now, my brother in Christ, let's go back in Scripture. Let's be honest. All 12 of the boys, the apostles, I affectionately refer to them as the boys, all 12 of the boys all ended up in a tough spot. When they were in the boat, and, the, and Peter yells out, Lord, if it is you, tell me to come. Come! There's 12 guys in that boat. Why doesn't Peter the only one get out? Why don't the others say, I'll go with you? Better yet, my brother Christ, if I had been in the boat, I know my nature. I would have been convincing Judas, this is a good time, you need to go, this is it. The fact of the matter is, Peter does walk on water. And yeah, he does get distracted because he's all of a sudden realizing he's walking on water. But the good Lord didn't carry him about to the boat either. My brother says, Christ, that's one out of 12. That's like 8% that trusted him. My brother says to Christ, when he's in the Garden of Gethsemane, he says, man, can you stay awake just for, just for one hour? He's 0 for 3 every time he goes back. That's 0%. My brother says to Christ, at the crucifixion, only one guy shows up at the crucifixion out of 12 Again, that's only about 8 or 9%. My brother and sister Christ, when he's resurrected from the tomb, how many of the apostles show up? None. Oh, yeah, after they found out, only two came. That's only 16%. You know what's amazing? Until they stop trusting just on their abilities and they start trusting more on God, then all of a sudden they're batting a thousand, if you will. My brother and sister Christ, every one of the apostles gave up his life years after Christ has come and gone. Say what you want about him. Peter is crucified upside down. He, according to tradition, he proclaimed the gospel for three hours. According to tradition, his wife, Porphyria, either died that same day or earlier in the week. 
His last words to her, according to tradition, go with God. My brother and sister in Christ, Thaddeus, whose also name went under Judas, was spared to death. If you go to Matthias, excuse me, yeah, Matthias, my brother and sister in Christ, he is beheaded, the one that took the place of Judas. If you were to go to Philip, who we believe was also married, he was crucified on a cross because he stepped on a demon, a snake, and killed it, and the king worshiped snakes, so he is crucified. Matthew is beheaded. He's the most intellectual of the group. As a matter of fact, Brother Christ, he at least had the choice, and he chose to be beheaded. You know what's amazing? Simon is sawed in half. Philip, the one that everybody loved and everybody got along with, he was speared to death in India. But yet nobody remembers that. They just call him the doubter. There was no doubt about him now. James the greater, the one that came first, the one the first to lose his life, he is beheaded. Say what you want about John, but we actually believe they tried to boil him in oil in Patmos, and when that didn't kill him, they just regulated him there. My brother in Christ, if you're, if you're James the lesser, do you know they actually brought him up to a pinnacle 200 feet in the air? Told him to deny our Savior, and when he wouldn't, they pushed him off, and when that didn't kill him, they beat him to death? If you are Andrew, Peter's brother, you are the consummate introvert. They put you on a crucifix of an X, and they crucified you because you took care of the governor's wife. He got furious and prideful, decided to crucify you like your Savior, and he is up there for three days. As a matter of fact, he's converting more people and doing more miracles on the cross. The governor wants to take him down, and he remarks to the governor, you put me up here, and here I will stay. You know why they use the cross? Because dogs have to eat, too. It's lower to the ground. My brother and sister Christ, Bartholomew is skinned alive. Everybody shows up once they've decided to put their trust in God. So now here you and I sit 2,000 years later. My brother and sister in Christ, how trustworthy are you and I? Let's see. Relative of our family and friends. If you were somebody and they came to you and said, look, will you make sure and make this phone call for me? You're going to make it. You're not going to come up with excuses. Oh, I texted them. Oh, I'll catch them in the morning. If you told somebody you're going to go by and pick them up, you're going to make sure and do it. That way they have no worries on their plate. If they came to you and said, man, I need to tell you this. Can you keep a secret? Can you? Or do you walk off about 20 feet later and say, man, you're not going to believe what I heard. If somebody came to you and said, man, i got to tell you this, I, I, I just can't believe it's true. You say, well, let's just pray for them, regardless of what it is. If they came to you at work and said, man, can you stay a little bit later? they got enough trust in you knowing that you'll do it because that's what you do. The decimal point has nothing on you. The day you and I decide that the decimal point dictates our life, then you and I are doomed on the road to perdition. Because 3,000 years later, 2,000 years later, we tie Judas to 30 pieces of silver. Never tie yourself to the decimal point. My brother and sister in Christ, here you and I sit. I'm asking you, man, can the good Lord trust you to follow the teachings of his church? Do you know the Ten Commandments? In order. Of the reason that's why he wrote them, in order. Because you can't get to heaven until you know them. John says, if you know the commandments... So be it. But if you say you love God and you do not know the commandments, you are a liar. My brother and sister in Christ, you be trusted to go to confession and put it on the table and stop buying into the argument that therefore you do not have to go to anyone. There's only one mediator between God and man, and that's Jesus Christ, St. Paul to Timothy. What Timothy's not telling you is, is the two lines before it said, pray for one another. Pray for me, I will pray for you. Pray for your alderman. Pray for intercessory. Pray for king. My brother and sister in Christ, here you and I sit. The question for you and I is, can you and I be trusted to follow our faith? When everything else is going south, can you be trusted that even on a weekend, when everything is going every which way, you're out of town doing this, that, and the other, you will find a church because that's what you do. And if it means telling your family, I'll catch you when I get out. Well, you don't understand. We got family, got friends, we got a barbecue. Man, Father, you don't understand. We got travel ball. My kid is going pro. True story. I'm sitting with a friend of mine. We're talking about it, and he's telling me how good of an athlete his son is. And I remember thinking, in high school, I said, didn't you sit next to me on the bench? And he said, well, yeah. I said, you and I were the guy that backed up the right fielder? He said, yes. I said, I've seen your wife, so tell me. How is it you're going pro again? My brother said, Christ, that's the problem. Everything else takes priority. 
At the end of the day, will God trust you enough to tell you that if you do not trust me in the little things, you do not trust me in things at work, how can he and I trust you to make the decision when the time comes? You've got to be willing to say now, brothers and sisters of Christ, that you are Catholic. You've got to be willing to make that sign clearly and distinctly when nobody else will do it. You've got to be willing to say the Hail Mary when nobody else wants to hear it. You've got to be willing to tell everybody in the group, I don't want to hear the gossip. Can you stop dropping the F-bomb? It's out of the mouth of Lucifer. My brother Christ, at what point do you not stand up and say that I'm a follower of Christ? Mark Twain was right. If there's a fence between heaven and hell, it's owned by the devil himself. He told you that if you do not acknowledge me in public, I will not acknowledge you before my Father. And if we can't do it on the little things, then we're not going to do it on the big things. We live in a world where this is vastly going down the road. When people come into your house, would you, my brother in Christ, be able to stand up and say, with your life and your family in peril, I am a believer in Jesus Christ. If the good Lord came to get you in your house and said, you must go now. Go now. Not, let me, let me talk to my family. I got to get in touch with my family. I got to make sure he got a job. I got a 401k. Would you be able to walk away? When Christ went to Peter, Peter dropped his nets and his boat immediately and walked away. My brother and sister in Christ, if he doesn't do that, we do not have a vicar of Christ. If you cannot make the decision now, what's going to happen when somebody comes to you and says, are you in or are you out? Are you a follower of Jesus Christ or you are not? Are you a member of the Holy Roman Catholic Church or are you not? You're not going to be able to hedge your bet. My brother and sister Christ, I'm telling you, you better make the decisions now because the bigger ones are coming and they're coming sooner than you think. And you're going to have to walk away trusting in God and his providence. My brother in Christ, I'm telling you, listen to me. I do not follow an elephant, nor do I follow a donkey. I only trust in the lamb. That has got to be the measure of your resolve. Amen? Amen. 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 Amen.